Chapter 4, Section 3, Geographic Changes In May 1804, Lewis and Clark set out from St. Louis on their journey to the Pacific Ocean. They paddled up the Missouri River and into the unexplored world of the American West, crossing vast plains and snow-capped mountains. They discovered plants and animals they had never seen before. They encountered American Indian tribes and learned about their ways of life. They even found the remains of a prehistoric dinosaur. Two years and four months later, they were back in St. Louis. The news of their expedition thrilled Americans and helped promote Western settlement. From sea to shining sea, acquiring the West. Much of the area that Lewis and Clark explored was part of the Louisiana Purchase. In 1803, Jefferson had bought the Louisiana Territory from France for $15 million, which was a large sum of money at the time. The Louisiana Purchase Treaty pushed the western boundary of the United States from the Mississippi River to the distant Rocky Mountains at a cost of about four cents an acre. Many people criticized Jefferson's action. Some thought the country did not need any more undeveloped land. Others protested that the purchase was unconstitutional because the Constitution did not give the president the power to buy foreign territory. But Jefferson could not pass up an opportunity to double the size of the United States. The Louisiana Purchase furthered his vision of an empire for liberty, stretching from sea to sea. Many Americans had good reasons for supporting national expansion. The country's population was growing rapidly. Good farmland in the settled eastern part of the country was becoming less plentiful. As a result, more and more people were moving west in search of cheap land. Many also believed expansion would make the country safer by reducing the threat of foreign invasion from the west. The idea of a larger, more powerful country also appealed to the American sense of nationalism. This combination of nationalism and expansionism gave rise in the 1840s to a belief known as manifest destiny. The term means obvious fate, and it seemed obvious to many Americans that the United States was meant to spread its founding ideals and democratic way of life across the continent and beyond. One politician at the time wrote, Nothing less than a continent can suffice as the basis and foundation for that nation whose destiny is involved in the destiny of mankind. The idea of Manifest Destiny inspired further expansion. Spain was persuaded to cede Florida to the United States in 1819. In 1845, Texas joined the Union as a state, after first gaining independence from Mexico. The United States and Great Britain signed a treaty in 1846 giving the United States control over about half of Oregon country. That same year, the United States went to war with Mexico over a border dispute in Texas. At the end of the Mexican War, the United States gained most of the American Southwest in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The Gadsden Purchase of 1853, which added a portion of present-day southern Arizona and New Mexico, completed the nation's continental expansion at that time. Settlers find opportunity and liberty in the West. As the United States expanded, American settlers moved into the newly acquired territories. Some traveled by wagon along the Santa Fe Trail, which was an old trade route from the Missouri River to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Many more headed west on the Oregon Trail, which stretched from Independence, Missouri to Portland, Oregon. The journey along the Oregon Trail, across the Great Plains and the Rocky Mountains, took many months and cost countless settlers their lives. Those who made it found fertile farmlands in the green valleys of Oregon. One group that made the journey west in the 1840s was made up of Mormons. This religious group traveled over the Oregon Trail to Utah to escape persecution. They settled on the desert land surrounding the Great Salt Lake and created a thriving, prosperous community. American Indians face a forced westward migration. Although westward expansion provided new opportunities for settlers, it spelled tragedy for many American Indians. As the United States added new territories, it also brought many Indian homelands within its national borders. Settlers who coveted these lands agitated for the removal of tribes to less desirable areas. In 1830, Congress passed the Indian Removal Act to clear Indians from the lands east of the Mississippi River. The plan was to move the tribes west to Indian Territory, which later became the state of Oklahoma. In a message to Congress entitled, on Indian removal, President Andrew Jackson praised the act for placing a dense and civilized population in large tracts of country now occupied by a few savage hunters. Although most tribes reluctantly went along with removal, some resisted. The Cherokees attempted a legal defense, claiming that they were protected from removal by earlier treaties. When Georgia refused to recognize the treaty rights, the Cherokees appealed to the Supreme Court. In Worcester v. Georgia, the court upheld the Cherokees' treaty rights. President Jackson, however, refused to enforce the court's decision. 
Other tribes, such as the Seminoles in Florida and the Sauk and Fox Indians of Wisconsin Territory, turned to armed resistance. Three tribes were nearly wiped out by army troops. In the end, the tribes that resisted removal were moved by force. The most famous forced migration was that of the Cherokees in 1838. On the journey to Indian Territory, about 4,000 of the more than 17,000 Cherokees died from starvation, disease, and harsh winter weather. This tragic journey is remembered today as the Trail of Tears. The country develops sectional identities. As the United States expanded, the three main sections of the country, North, South, and West, began to develop distinct identities. These identities were influenced by different geographical characteristics of each section and by the people who settled there. The North included the states that stretched from Pennsylvania north to New England and from the Atlantic to the Appalachians. In New England, cold winters and poor soil led many people to turn to commerce, shipbuilding, and fishing for a living. Elsewhere, most Northerners farmed for a living. However, by the mid-1800s, some Northerners were leaving their farms to work in the growing number of mills and factories. Many new immigrants also flocked to northern cities in search of jobs. The South stretched from the Chesapeake Bay south to Florida and west to the Mississippi River. With the South's mild climate and rich soil, agriculture was the dominant occupation through the mid-1800s. Although most Southerners were small farmers, plantation agriculture was becoming more and more important. Plantation owners relied on slave labor to cultivate cash crops, such as cotton and tobacco. The most successful planters lived lives of great affluence. In the early 1800s, the West meant the lands between the Appalachians and the Mississippi River. By the 1840s, however, the West meant the area west of the Mississippi. Early settlement of the West was motivated by farmers' desire for cheap, fertile land. Americans, as well as immigrants from many countries, crossed the continent in search of new opportunities in the West. As they mixed with Indians and Mexicans already living there, new patterns of life emerged.